Okay, we are live. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this live. So uh, we are now with Carlos from Spain. We have actually a good river here, and we can do a live observation. Yay! <laughs> the first one with me. So uh, I will let uh, Carlos uh, present himself. And um, yeah, hello, Carlos. Okay. Hello, good night. Thank you, Victoria. Okay, good night, everybody. My name is uh, Carlos Vicente from Spain. Uh, let's say I'm just a, a, a member of the uh, Asociación Valenciana Astronomía. Okay, so we are, let's say, a community to uh, show uh, the others here in the East Coast of Spain the wonders of our night sky. So. Uh, I will show to you today, tonight, uh, a little bit how the EVS scope works and some of the uh, objects. I would like to take the opportunity to, to thank Unistellar for inviting me for, for this. Uh, and uh, what I will also do is to switch from English to Spanish uh, from time to time. Okay, so uh, for our Spanish public, which will be probably the the biggest percentage of, uh, of it, uh, they, they can follow without any, any trouble. Uh, hola, buenas noches. Uh, soy Carlos Vicente, miembro de la Asociación Valenciana de, de Astronomía. Uh, y bueno, uh, buenas noches a todos. Quería, uh, uh, bueno, pues hoy os voy a enseñar un poquito el, el IBS Scope y cómo funciona. Y bueno, como he dicho en inglés, pues iré cambiando de inglés a, a español, ¿vale? Para que todo esté un poquito más claro para todo el mundo. Así que bueno, vamos a comenzar. Eh, cambio otra vez inglés y iré cambiando ya sin, sin avisar. Well, just to, to start with, uh, maybe uh, the first uh, idea would be to uh, to say what or to talk about what is the EVS scope. My, of course, my my recommendation would be that you just go to the web page and you find it out yourself. Uh, but in any case, some some few words is that okay, it is a totally automatized uh, telescope. It is a small one, just 4.5 inches with 450 millimeter focal. It is indeed a, a, a reflector uh, telescope, but the main thing here is that the secondary mirror has been replaced by a camera sensor, okay? So uh, basically, thanks to that uh, and to all the automatic features that the Eviscope has, let's say that uh, you can do uh, live observations uh, like if you were taking photographs, let's say, okay? So, uh, let's say that this telescope uh, has everything integrated. You do automatic field detection, uh, you, you don't need to do a polar alignment or things like that. Uh, you have uh, go-to tracking, everything, and, the, and as I said, you have an embedded software that stacks all the images that you are taking and then show to you live both in the app, that is what you are seeing here, but also in the digital eyepiece that you have in the, in the, in the, in the telescope itself. Just a few more words uh, from my side, which I find quite interesting is the, let's say, the relationship with the SETI Institute, so that we can do some kind of citizen science. So indeed, uh, last uh, Sunday, I participated in one of them with an asteroid occultation from a, a star, uh, well, a star occultation from an asteroid, better said. And okay, then this data is gathered by the people we, we uh, upload it to the servers and they can work with that data. So you can imagine that uh, uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, telescopes pointing to the same uh, object. We can take quite a lot of data and relevant data for science. Bueno, pues simplemente he dicho unas palabritas sobre, sobre el IBSCOPE, que está automatizado, eh, que está, vamos, básicamente lo que hace es que el secundario del, del reflector es un sensor, entonces pues va cogiendo o va haciendo tomas eh, sobre el sensor y tal va mostrando automáticamente en la aplicación que estéis viendo y también en el eh, ocular digital que tiene incorporado. También he dicho que, que una cosa que a mí particularmente me gusta es la alianza que tienen con el Instituto SETI, que te permite participar en campañas de, de ciencia. ¿vale? Por ejemplo, yo el domingo pasado participé en una, una ocultación de una estrella por parte de un asteroide para eh, recabar información sobre el asteroide y demás. 
Así que, bueno, estas son algunas de las alguna información del, del IBESCO, pero podéis ir a la página web y, y encontrar toda la información que queráis que, que está bastante detallada. Ok, about the observing conditions, uh, let's say we have almost half moon today in the Virgo constellation, so that part of the sky is pretty, is pretty brighty, so it's uh, really, we have a lot of light there. I live uh, 15 kilometers west from Valencia, so you can imagine Valencia is a big city in the east coast of Spain, so you can imagine that that part of the sky is also very uh, uh, polluted from uh, light polluted, let's say. But uh, from all other aspects, I think the night is pretty pretty okay. We don't have clouds and, and so on, so I think uh, it will be fine. It will be nice to show you some some objects objects tonight. I would say that. Uh, Yeah, if we go to the bottle scale, I would say I am around seven, between seven and eight, maybe. Okay. Okay, so let's move uh, to the app and some of the objects. Uh, the first thing I did was just, well, the, the, the setup of the telescope. Well, I switched to Spanish a little bit. Uh, simplemente hablado un poquito de, de las condiciones del, del cielo esta noche. Tenemos media luna prácticamente en Virgo. Vivo a 15 kilómetros de Valencia, al oeste, así que la parte este de Valencia para mí está prohibida casi. Pero el resto de condiciones, pues bastante buenas. No tenemos nubes hoy, no hay viento, o sea que bastante bien, aunque ha hecho bastante calor hoy. Así que, bueno, en fin, no son perfectas, pero, pero bastante buenas. Bueno, uh, I was moving to the, to the app itself, so I just uh, set up the telescope. The setup of the telescope is just, uh, I would say, three minutes, so you only have... Uh, Let's say the legs, the tripod of the telescope, and then the telescope itself, two pieces. So you just set it up, switch it on, and you connect through the Wi-Fi that the telescope uh, provides. And then the first thing you do is to point somewhere in the sky. Okay, you see here some, uh, on the app, you see here some stars. And then you can apply the field detection, is this uh, uh, icon, okay, uh, between the joystick and the eye here below. So I can press in there, and then it will start the field detection. And this is basically what it's doing: is comparing, uh, comparing the view of the EBS scope with the database that they have. And then uh, now it is has it has finished. So now it is uh, in principle it knows where it is, uh, and where to go to find the objects. So the first object I will show to you today will be M51. I would say a classic. Okay, so let's say in the app, I didn't mention that you have uh, several parts here. When you go to explore, then you have the possibility to look for any object in the database. So we are talking here about the M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. You select it and you just go to Goto. And the scope is moving now to the M51. I, I, I just pos positioned the, the database scope very close to M51 for the first shot. So it will be fast. So we have to wait a little bit. Eh, bueno, he explicado que, que simplemente haces una, un, un detectado de campo automático comparando lo que ve el, el telescopio en la cámara o, o en el sensor con la base de datos para saber dónde se encuentra. Y una vez sabes dónde se encuentra, pues ya puedes ir a la parte de Explore y seleccionar el, el objeto que, que quieras. Uh, bueno, ahora it's moving to the to the to the target. It should be almost there, I would say. Okay, and uh, the point is, of course, M51 is a very, let's say, uh, faint object. Okay, now it's finished. You don't see anything, but uh, that is the the beauty of this scope because uh, M51 is should be there. So now what we can start is the process of a stack of the different images it is taking, okay? So I will just press this uh, icon with the eye and the star uh, on it, okay? And the stacking process starts. Vale, pues ahora ya está empezando a, a acumular eh, tomas. Las tomas creo que son de, de cuatro segundos cada una. And uh, you can see there the first image, okay? And you will see how the, the image changes. I can change uh, the view. Uh, doing something like that, probably you'd see it better. Okay, so this is M51, okay, and you 
you can see that uh, the image improves with the time. Okay, and it's taking, let's say, four seconds uh, uh, shots and stacking everything automatically, okay? So just some information maybe about F M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy or Galaxia de Remolino in Spanish. I think it's one of those objects that uh, as a, uh, astronomer, I mean, uh, amateur astronomer will love to, to take a look to. Uh, but it's really an object, uh, well, it's an interesting one with these two galaxies interacting and connected through, through a, let's say, a faint arm between them. I don't know, you can more or less see it already. Okay, even if it's just uh, very few. Let's say we are still below one minute. But okay, this object, is, uh, the apparent size is around 11 per 7 uh, arc minutes. And the apparent magnitude is around 8.4. So of course, this cannot be seen with naked eye. And I would say with, with binoculars, it's, it's really a hard, a very hard object. It contains around 100 billion stars, so it's not, not that bad. The distance is around, well, I have seen several sources, between, but it seems to be between 23 and, and 30 millions of uh, light years. Okay, so ya podéis ver cómo el proceso va mejorando la imagen, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, de esta galaxia que creo que a todos los que nos gusta un poco la observación astronómica es una de nuestras favoritas. Y bueno, he dado algunos datos de distancia y de magnitud y demás que bueno, vale la pena eh, repetir. Simplemente, bueno, pues, pues que como he dicho está acumulando tomas. And now an interesting, an interesting uh, thing uh, is that you can go to this, uh, on top of, of the app, you can go to this icon with the arrow, you just press on it, and then you save a picture about uh, the exact moment that you are looking at. And then you go to the, to the gallery, and then this part I like quite a lot because, okay, okay you, you, you are losing here field of view, by the way, I didn't mention that, but the field of view is around 30 arc minutes. But here, you see that you have information about the object, the time, the exposure time, two minutes now, the date, and so on. So I think it's, it's uh, pretty nice to save the data like that. And, uh, well, it keeps, in, in theory, improving the image, taking more and more data, and you can see already the details of the arms of the galaxy and the interaction of the two galaxies. It's a pretty nice object indeed. Okay. Um, bueno, eh, como he dicho, ¿no? puedes salvar la imagen y, y vienes aquí y te da toda la información de lo que estás observando, el tiempo de exposición y demás. Okay, let's move to, to another object. I don't have too much time, but I want to show you several uh, different objects we have. It will not be perfect image, but I think it is worth taking a first look to the T2 Panstars uh, comet. It's also it's close to, to M51. So it's moving now to that location. Bueno, ahora me estoy moviendo al, al cometa T2 eh, Panstars, eh, descubierto en 2017. Y bueno, la imagen no será muy buena, pues porque ya está, creo que en magnitud 9 y está, bueno, relativamente, la luna le está afectando bastante. De acuerdo, pero bueno, algo, algo del cometa se podrá ver, no se verá mucho la, la cola, pero bueno, para mostrar que lo podemos observar. Ok, it's leaving to, to, the, to the location of the comet. Okay, this comet was indeed uh, discovered in 2017, that's the reason for its name, and uh, by the telescope Panstars, which is located in Hawaii. Okay, finished, now I will go to the eye with the star to enhance vision. Okay, and okay, currently it is in Canis Benatici, the, in the constellation. And uh, yeah, the magnitude, the upper magnitude is around nine currently. Okay, you can see now this diffuse point in the middle, I will do a zoom. Okay, it, uh, I will just turn the, the, the screen. Okay, so you can see there this diffuse uh, dot that says the comet. Okay, so it's pretty, 
it's pretty weak, but it's still we can see it in the night with a half moon. Okay, so it's not uh, not not the best conditions for this kind of, of objects, but it's uh, it's pretty nice indeed. Last uh, last week I was taking an image of this uh, comet together with NGC 4100, and it looked pretty nice. But anyway, just to show you. And I will switch now. I will move now to another type of object as as soon as I finish this. Ok, so, ya podéis, ver, podéis ver aquí el cometa, no se ve mucho porque las condiciones no son perfectas y bueno, realmente de momento el tiempo de exposición es relativamente corto, ¿de acuerdo? Pero bueno, hay bastante ruido por, por el tema de, de, la, de la luna y demás. Y bueno, pues simplemente esta toma, hice una toma la semana pasada en el CAT de la Asociación Valenciana de Astronomía en Aras de los Olmos, que es una zona bastante bastante oscura y magnífica para, para la observación de, del cielo. Eh, hice una, una imagen con, con este cometa junto a, a NGC 4100, una, una galaxia en, en eh, la Osa Mayor. Ok, let's move to the next object. I, I just want to, to go through different types of objects, so now to M13, which is also classical a classic object for us, the Great Hercules uh, Globular uh, Cluster. Okay. Okay, so it's linking to, to the target. Maybe just uh, some information about uh, this object. By the way, you can see that the, the app is giving to you information about the main objects here, okay? So in this particular case, it's telling you how old uh, This cluster is, is 12 billion years old, so it's amazing. And the number of stars you have, you have there. Okay, so you can read this information while the scope is moving to the target. Bueno, comentaba que estamos moviendo a M13 en, en Hércules. Creo que casi todo el mundo conoce el, el, este cúmulo globular. Y bueno, que la aplicación conforme le pides que vaya a ese objeto que vaya ese objeto, pues eh, te da información sobre el objeto, ¿de acuerdo? Pues eh, la edad, el número de estrellas que contiene y demás. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, bueno, le cuesta, un, le, costó, le va a costar un poco de tiempo porque está en la parte del cielo bastante diferente. Está, de hecho, está en el cenit ahora, bastante en el cenit, puede que que el tracking en algún momento nos diga que estamos demasiado cerca del cenit, como suele pasar con, con los gotos. Pero bueno, it's moving, uh, right now moving to M13. Ok, it's taking a while, but uh, should go there. It's a bit far away from, from, from F, uh, M51 or, or Canes Benatis to, to Hercules. but it should, it should find it. So after M51, which is a galaxy and the, and the T2 pans just come and now start to, to this uh, globular uh, cluster. Uh, this is a cluster that in theory, if you are in a very dark sky, you could see it with the naked eye. Its magnitude is around six, almost six. So it should be possible if you have a good eye and you have a dark sky to see it, but it's uh, it's not easy. Uh, the distance to the object is around 25,000 light years. Okay, and as I said before, it's a very old it's a very old object. Okay. I said it's quite close to the zenith, so it might uh, have some problems with the tracking because it's very, very like in the zenith, but should find it. Well, I don't know if I f it found it because it should be available as soon, it should be visible as uh, before doing the enhanced vision. I will ju just go through that, but I think, uh, 
yeah, I was a bit too close to the Senate, maybe. Maybe it's better to move to, for instance, I don't know, moving to M3 is an option. Ah, okay, yeah, it was there. Okay, it was not center, but uh, it was indeed there. I can, with the joystick here on the left, you can uh, move a little bit the object up and down. So you have to stop the has vision and then do it, do it, and then do it. But I think you can see here more or less the, uh, the details of the cluster. Okay. And you can see some, uh, I would say, orange stars, which are old ones, or red, uh, red giants. Okay, so so there, you, there we are. Okay, I will move uh, now to another classic object. I will move to uh, the Dumble Neula and 27. Okay, as I said before, uh, here you have information about the object. Okay. Bueno, hemos visto el, el cluster, el, el cúmulo M13, el cúmulo globular M13, eh, 12.000 millones de años de, de antigüedad. Eh, y bueno, ahora me muevo hacia, el, y ves cómo se mueve hacia la nebulosa Dumble, que creo en castellano la nebulosa de la PESA, pero yo creo que no lo utiliza nadie ese nombre. De acuerdo, y tenemos aquí más información sobre la, sobre la nebulosa. Vale. Básicamente, eh, alguna, alguna información es una nebulosa planetaria. De acuerdo, básicamente significa que es una estrella en, los, en las etapas finales de su vida que ha eyectado las capas eh, exteriores. De acuerdo. Y al final, pues en el centro del, digamos, lo que permanecerá dentro de 50.000 años o 100.000 años, será una nana blanca, ¿de acuerdo? Tiene una antigüedad, creo que explotó hace 3.000, 4.000 años, una magnitud aparente de 7.5, o sea que no es visible eh, al ojo desnudo, pero, pero sí con binoculares, es relativamente sencilla. Y está a una distancia de, de 1.300 años luz. Okay, so in principle we have there the uh, Dumble Nebula. I will just go again to the has vision mode, and it should appear in the in the middle. I was explaining in Spanish that this is a, a let's say a dying uh, star which ejected uh, ejected uh, the outer layers uh, uh, of of the stars and of the star, and now in well in the center it remains a, a white dwarf. Okay, and it has uh, magnitude 7.5, so it's not visible in the naked eye, with the naked eye. So you can see there how it pops up. Okay, still quite noisy because there are the the, the exposure time is uh, short still, but I think you can already, if I change this view, you can already even see the star in the middle, which is the white dwarf right up there in the middle and you can see the layers perfectly and of course the image will improve with with the time and the noise will be reduced i can maybe try i can maybe try to i show i told you that uh, the ebiscope has an electronic eyepiece i find it very useful especially when uh, doing star parties so I'm trying to, okay, here, you have the eyepiece and the image, you can see with my phone, of course, uh, the quality yeah, is not can, perfect with the phone. Okay, we but, can see uh, colors, yeah, okay, it's good. working. So we have an eyepiece there and I think it's very interesting. Uh, so yeah, uh, como decía antes, la nebulosa Dumble, ya habéis visto que, que tiene un ocular electrónico y bueno, que se, puede, se ve bastante bien y decía también que, que creo que para actividades de, de públicas de observación pues puede ser bastante interesante y creo que a la gente le, le gustará bastante de hecho y bueno creo que eh, Victoria I think we are more or less uh, yes, at the end right it's the end uh, maybe okay. we could do a last subject if you want 
Um, uh, yeah, I mean, M27, maybe we can go to M57. Yeah, it's not too good. far. And we'll go to this the Ring Nebula. This is also a classic object, also from the Messier catalog. Okay, it's also a planetary nebula. Okay. But uh, it's much smaller than the than the Dumbbell Nebula. Bueno, me estoy moviendo a la nebulosa del anillo en, en Lira como un último objeto. Es un objeto también bastante clásico para la observación amateur, digamos. Y como decía antes, bueno, pues aquí veis que tiene que, que el, tiene la base de datos con información sobre sobre el objeto. Puedes estar leyendo mientras mientras eh, mientras el, el, el telescopio se mueve hacia el objetivo. Okay, so it's arriving there. This is a small object. I mean, the apparent size is uh, pretty small, but anyway, we will, in any case, we will also, or we should also see the colors, beautiful colors of this uh, of this planetary nebula as well. Okay, here we go. So you can see the planetary, the planetary nebula in the middle, and 57 from the Messier catalog. And if we have more exposure, you can also see the, the center star, okay, of this of this uh, planetary nebula as well. Okay. So well, yeah, uh, maybe. We can like with this subject it's really you have a really beautiful sky uh, yeah, I must not, say not bad. yeah yeah <laughs> everything you, you, we saw uh, it was really uh, neat and you okay. didn't have to to do much like like this one it's yeah. just a few seconds and it was already uh, good. yeah yeah this, yeah. Uh, this objects are, are really pretty pretty nice very nice here yeah indeed Okay, so maybe I can say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, so yeah. Uh, uh, goodbye. thank you. <laughs> thank you again, yeah. uh, Carlos, to be here to do this. Thank you for attending us. and just some words in Spanish. Uh, gracias a todos por atender y bueno, estamos aquí en Valencia, la Asociación Valenciana de Astronomía. Así que cuando a veces cuando pase todo este temita del coronavirus y retomemos las actividades públicas, pues podéis ver el Bibliescope y todos los telescopios que ponemos a, a vuestra disposición, a todo el público, y que los disfrutéis. Y gracias por atender, a, a, por, por vuestro tiempo. Hasta luego. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, the next slide will be uh, with uh, Alan from Canada. It will be in French and will be in a couple of hours, so you can go uh, have some sleep before going back uh, here. Um, well, uh, have a good night, Carlos. And, Thank you, uh, same for you. Yeah, I hope uh, we will do it again uh, next time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye, good night. Good night.